Okay, what's up YouTube? This is J-Man Time, and today I have another video for you guys today. Today's video is on German training tanks of the Second World War. Now, when we think of German training tanks, we normally think of those improvised tanks made out of wood and other cheap materials that were used to camouflage some type of tractor or armored car by disguising it as a tank. Now, during the war, the Germans used a lot of these training tanks, but they also had some, some professionally built training tanks along with these mock-up training tanks. So, let's go over some of the training tanks of the Second World War that were used by the Wehrmacht, the SS, and also the Volkssturm militias. The first true training tank used by Germany was actually designed during the era of the Weimar Republic. This tank comes from 1929 and it is known as the Le Tractor. The Le Tractor was a light tank or an experimental tank that was designed between 1929 and 1930. This tank had actually come out of a joint program between Germany and the Soviet Union during the era of the Weimar Republic. This was known as the Kamov Training uh, Facility. It was actually a facility used by both Germany and the Soviet Union to test experimental tanks. One of those tanks that came out of that joint cooperation between those two, two countries was the Le Tractor. The Le Tractor was a light tank fitted with a 37 millimeter main gun. In fact, its main armament was one 37 millimeter KWK 36 L45 main gun. This vehicle also had a speed of 30 kilometers per hour or 19 miles per hour. This vehicle also was one of the first German tanks to use riveted armor. This is what this was one of the first post World War One German tanks or post World War One German tanks to use riveted armor since the era of the A7V. The Le Tractor entered service in 1930 and stayed in service until 1945. During that 15 long period, this tank was constantly used as a training tank for German tank crews, both before and during the Second World War. Only four Le Tractor tanks were built, and all of these tanks are actually individual tanks. They all have the base, same basic blueprints on paper, but they all have different methods of construction and were made by different arsenals. The two main arsenals that produced these tanks were the Rhine Metal and Krupp companies. The tanks were originally designed on paper in the year 1928, making the Le Tractor the first German training tank, or at least the first German training tank to be used by the Nazi German army, which came into fruition in 1934, one year after the Nazi party took over in 1933. The next German training tank was the Nebel Fazulk tank. The Nebel Fazulk tank was a German um, heavy tank that was designed between 1933 and 1934. This was the first tank actually designed by the National Socialist Government of Germany. Only five of these tanks were built. The Nebel Fazulk tanks were heavy tanks constructed by the Rhine Metal Company between the years 1933 and 1936. These vehicles had a armor thickness of 13 to 20 millimeters and had a main armament of one 75 millimeter KWK L24 main gun and a secondary turret fitted with a 37 millimeter KWK 36 slash L45 secondary main gun. These vehicles were sometimes fitted with a 105 millimeter howitzer as well. These tanks also had a speed of 25 kilometers per hour or 16 miles per hour. These Nebel Fazug tanks were pretty much the rarest of the German heavy tanks, but they were also the first uh, heavy training tanks used by the National Socialist Government. Uh, before this, there was the Grouse Tractor, but the Grouse Tractor was a heavy tank used by the Weimar Republic in the years before the National Socialist Takeover in 1933. The Nebel-Fazog tanks were mostly used as propaganda vehicles, mostly throughout the years before and during the Second World War. The only time the Nebel-Fazog tanks were actually used in combat was during the Battle of Norway or the invasion of Norway in 1940. 
During the invasion of Norway, three of these tanks were actually assigned to, to second and third line combat units where they were used in infantry support or as infantry support tanks for the Wehrmacht army and the SS during the invasion of Norway. Most people keep forgetting that Norway is a, or at least the border regions of Norway, these are a, this country has a lot of um, mountainous regions or mountainous pass, passageways. As a result, during the invasion of Norway, the Germans mostly relied on light tanks like the Panzer 1 and 2. Panzer 3s, 4s, and even the Neville Vosug tanks were mostly used as infantry support tanks as they really couldn't traverse the mountain pathways like the Panzer 1s and 2s could. These tanks mostly saw service as mobile artillery pieces for the German infantry during the invasion of Norway itself. Now, the Neville Fazog tanks were used up until the year 1944, and between 1940 and 1944, these tanks were slowly decommissioned and scrapped or melted down for scrap metal to produce other tanks and equipment for the German armies. By 1944, the last Nebel Fazug tank had been pretty much dismantled and was nothing but an engineless shell. After World War II, the last chassis of the Nebel Fazug tank was melted down entirely, but it is unknown where this tank was stored during that time period between 1946 and 1947, which was the last uh, recorded date of the Nebel Fazug tank. Uh, this is actually one of the sadder tanks, you know, it's one of the coolest tanks, but one of the sadder tanks also because it's one of the few German tanks that has no surviving um, example. All that's left of the Nebel Vazug tank today are a few brackets and components that managed to survive being melted down. During the 1930s or the late 1930s, the Germans began using a type of training vehicle or training tank known as the Panzer Atrapi. The Panzer Atrapi or Panzer Atrapi was basically a series of uh, improvised tanks made from civilian or military cars. These vehicles were fitted with fake guns and fake armor, or sometimes they were just fitted with fake armor but had real machine guns. The first uh, Panzer Atrapis to be uh, manufactured for the German army were the Volkswagen's Kubel wagons or Kubel wagons. These were the Kubel wagons Type 81 and Type 82. These were pretty much training tank-like armored cars that were developed between 1936 and 1938. These vehicles were sometimes fitted with a 7.92 millimeter machine gun or a training gun, whether it be a training machine gun or a dummy cannon. These vehicles only had mock-up armor, so they had no real armor, and they had a speed of about 80 kilometers per hour or 56 miles or 50 to 56 miles per hour, and had a crew of three. These were the most versatile of the Panzer Retrapies as they could be modified to look like light tanks and some of these were modified to look like heavy tanks also. One of the rarer and cooler um, training vehicles were training tanks used in the German army or by the German army. During the course of World War II, the Germans began using improvised training tanks. These were training tanks built from tractors. And the two most, uh, I guess the two better examples would be the Caliputer Schneider training tank from 1945 and the Panzerkampfwagen Schule. The Schule was a light training tank that was built by both Germany and the independent state of Croatia in 1941. This was a light training tank that was meant to resemble Kind of like a cross between a Panzer I and a World War I vintage French uh, Renault FT-17. Remember, Croatia was part of the uh, Federal Republic of Yugoslavia or the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. And when Germany annexed Yugoslavia in 1941, the uh, independent state of Croatia was created as a German puppet state and they pretty much inherited all of the tanks from the or most of the tanks from the former Yugoslav army which was made up of World War One and post-World War One variants of the French FT-17 and the French NC-26 and MC-31 class of light tanks. 
So the shuttle tank was meant to make up or to be used as a training tank for those Pacific tanks. So both the German and Croat tank crews used the shield as a training tank, but the shield was armed with a real 37 millimeter uh, German made anti-tank gun. So it could be used as a light tank also. The Caterpillar Schneider was a German training tank or improvised tank that was built and occupied France. Uh, when Germany annexed France in 1940, they began constructing training tanks or improvised tanks from leftover French vehicles, mostly French artillery tractors or tracked artillery vehicles. One of these vehicles was the Caterpillar Schneider, which was a artillery tractor used to pull heavy French artillery guns or heavy French Schneider type uh, howitzers and field guns. The Germans modified many of these into improvised tanks slash training tanks that were fitted with a 50 millimeter Pac-38 anti-tank gun and were also given improvised armor that was up to 5 to 15 millimeters thick. These vehicles were pretty slow, only having a speed of about 5 to 10 miles per hour and usually had a 4 to 6 man crew. They were used both as training tanks and but they were also used as main battle tanks or as cheap improvised tanks during the uh, Allied invasion of France in 1944 during both the D-Day invasion and the aftermath of um, Operation Overlord when the Allies began defeating the German armies both in France and in Belgium. Now, let's move on to the German wood gas tanks. Now, most people have never heard of the German wood gas tanks. Wood gas tanks were pretty much German tanks that were powered by wood gas, like literal wood gas. I'm pretty sure you've heard of wood gas propulsion systems. Well, this, these were also used both on actual German tanks and on German training tanks. The Germans actually built special purpose tanks that were designed to be used that were they were designed to use the wood gas system so let's go over some of the wood gas tanks or wood gas training tanks of the Wehrmacht and the SS uh, Panzer divisions one of the rarest um, wood gas tanks was actually a wood gas tank designed for the Volkswagen militia around 1943 or 1944. This vehicle is known as the Volkswagen Panzerkampfwagen 1 Auschwitz or Auschwitz. These were this was a wood gas powered tank a light tank that was used to train the Volkstern militias. The Volkstern militias were a political militia that was put together between 1943 and 1944. As pretty much that these soldiers were meant to make up for the lack of manpower. They were mostly made up of the Hitler youth and older soldiers or retirees who were simply too old or were unfit for the regular army. So the Volkssturm also had to use German tanks, so they needed training tanks, and they used these Volkssturm Panzerkampfwagen ones VETs as the basic light training tank for training of uh, new reconnaissance crews. This vehicle was built in 1944 and was armed with either a false 37 millimeter gun or an actual 37 millimeter Pac-36 anti-tank gun. These vehicles were sometimes, most of these vehicles had no armor or zero armor, but sometimes they were fitted with five to 15 millimeters of hobo armor or improvised armor. These vehicles had a speed of about 25 miles per hour as they used a wood gas version of the Panzer I engine. Um, some of these tanks were actually used as last ditch light tanks during the Soviet invasion of Germany in 1945. So there are some footage, some photos, uh, maybe even some footage of these Volkssturm Panzerkampfwagen um, training tanks actually being used as, you know, light tanks fitted with actual 37 millimeter Pac-36 guns as last ditch tanks against the Soviet forces. And that was pretty useless as, as I said, most of these tanks were originally built with no armor. And if they did have armor, it was usually improvised armor or cheap armor. There was also another version or a turreted version or a heavy turreted version of the Volkssturm Panzerkampf 1 also known as the Volkssturm Panzerkampfwagen 2 VET. This is pretty much um, 
An improvement of the Volkswagen Panzer Kef 1 training tank, the Panzer Kef Wagon 2 had a turret, a, an actual turret um, from a Panzer 3 actually. It was a fusion of the Panzer 2 and the Panzer 3. It had the Panzer 2 chassis fitted with a Panzer 3, an older model Panzer 3 37 millimeter turret. Uh, this vehicle actually had armor 5 to 15 millimeters thick and had the same speed of 25 miles per hour. These were even rare, not that many were made, probably only about maybe 10 to 20 of these were built. They were originally built in 1943, 1944, and they were used as training tanks originally, but as the war got harder, you know, and the Germans began running out of fuel or petrol, they began using some of these wood gas tanks as actual tanks because they were fitted. They, they were just Panzer II chassis fitted with Panzer III turrets. So these were the actual chassis and turrets of those tanks just fitted with a wood gas engine. So as long as you had some wood gas on you, you were good. And it could be used in combat. And some of them were used in combat. And some of them did fall into Allied hands. These were used both on the eastern and western fronts. And some of these were abandoned or were found abandoned in various towns and villages. And there were also some photographs uh, that were taken by the actual crews that were declassified years later. And that's what the photographs you're seeing now of these Panzer Kev Vegas or these Volkssturm Panzer Kev Wagen II um, training tanks. There was also the Volkssturm uh, Panzer Kev Wagen uh, two slash three training tank. This training tank was actually a fusion of the Panzer uh, three turret on the chassis of a Volks uh, a Volkswagen Kuba wagon, you know, the training armored car. This was a training armored car that was turned into a training tank slash a gun tank. This vehicle actually had a 37 millimeter pack gun fitted with a gun, a, a, a muzzle brake, you know. So this was a training tank that could also be used as a real tank. Um, it had either no armor, false armor, or it could be fitted with 5 to 15 millimeters of fault of um, improvised armor. And again, it had the um, speed of the Kubo wagon, which was 80 kilometers per hour. This is one of the rarer ones. I've only seen about two or three photographs of this specific training tank that could be used as an actual tank. You know, making it one of the rarer versions of this vehicle, you know. And then you had the heavier um, gas power tanks. You had the Panzer III, IVs, and the Tiger um, tanks that were powered by wood gas also. So let's go over some of those. You had the um, uh, Farschul Panzer Wagen III, or Farschul Panzer Kev Wagen III. This was pretty much just a Panzer III chassis fitted with a wood gas engine. Um, some of these vehicles had no turrets at first. Uh, these vehicles actually came out before the most of the vehicles on this list. This vehicle was uh, this vehicle entered service in 1942 originally, and this was pretty much a medium training tank. Originally, these were just Panzer Kev Wagen three chassis that had no turrets attached to them. But later on, some of them did receive turrets, either a 50 millimeter turret or a 50 millimeter gun turret. You also had some fitted with the 75 millimeter KWK 37 um, L65 main gun, you know. But most of them were fitted with training guns at first when they did receive turrets. So this is a wood gas version of the Panzer Kampf Wagen 3 or the Panzer Wagen 3. You also had the wood gas version of the Panzer um, 4. The um, Fischl Panzer IV or Fischl um, Panzer Kev Wagen IV. This is basically the same as the Panzer III. These started off as turretless um, wood gas powered chassis to teach um, Panzer IV crews how to man this tank or drive this tank uh, correctly. But then as the war dragged on, they were fitted with actual turrets. So these were wood gas powered tanks that could be used both as training tanks, but they could also be fitted with 75 millimeter guns and used as wood gas powered uh, medium battle tanks. You also had some wood gas powered tank destroyers like the Fischl Panzer Jäger uh, 38T. This was the Panzer 38T tank destroyer or the Mulder 3 tank destroyer converted into a wood gas powered tank destroyer. This vehicle was built uh, in 1942 or the enter service in 42. 
These vehicles were fitted with a 50 millimeter, either a 50 millimeter Pac-40 anti-tank gun or a 75 millimeter anti-tank gun. And they also had an armor thickness of 11 to 25 millimeters and a speed of 25 miles per hour. This one is also pretty rare. There's probably only about 10 or 15 of these were ever made. And finding photographs of them are even rare. When these vehicles were first introduced, they also had no guns. These were just training tanks to take. These were just um, wood gas powered chassis originally to train the Panzer Jaeger crews how to man this tank, but they were eventually, you know, fitted with armor and turrets later on in the war. You also had the uh, wood gas version of the Panther tank or the Panzer Cat Wagon 5. This was the wood gas tank. This tank, this wood gas powered medium training tank entered service in 1943. And it was this was well one of the first uh, medium training tanks to be to have its turret when it was originally manufactured. So this was a wood gas powered medium training tank fitted with an actual Panther turret. So this was just a Panther with a wood gas powered engine. It had the 75 millimeter um, KWK 42 slash L70 main gun, you know, and some of them did have false training guns also. Um, this vehicle had the same armor thickness, the 25 to 100 millimeters, and had a speed of 55 kilometers per hour or 33 miles per hour. So this was literally a Panther tank, uh, designed to be both as a wood gas powered training tank, but also as a wood gas powered main uh, medium battle tank that could be used in combat. And the best of the wood gas powered tanks is the Fischl Panzerwagen um, 6, the Tiger. The wood gas version of the Tiger tank. And this vehicle entered service in 1942 also, along with the Panzer, uh, the Fischl Panzer Kaffwagen 3 and 4 series. Um, this vehicle originally, like all the others, except for the Panther, was originally uh, entered service as just a turretless, wood gas powered chassis of a Tiger tank. But later on, some of these were fitted with 88 millimeter turrets, mounting the 88 millimeter, 8.8 centimeter KWK 36 slash L56 main gun. That was a mouthful. Uh, these tanks had the actual armor thickness of a Tiger tank of 25 to 120 millimeters on some versions, and had the same speed of a Tiger tank, the 45.4 kilometers per hour or the 28.2 miles per hour, and still had the crew of five but it needed two additional crewmen to handle the wood gas propulsion system so this is one of the rare versions of the tiger tanks the wood gas powered tiger tanks i don't know how many of these were made probably not that many maybe only about 10 to 20 in total maybe They're probably less than that there's no real information on how many of these wood gas powered tiger tanks were made so i'm pretty lost on that information um, you also had wood gas powered half tracks. The Germans did make a wood gas powered version of the Sonderkraft wagon um, SDKFZ um, 251 or the SD. Uh, Z 251 half track. Uh, this is pretty much just that half track converted to uh, use the wood gas powered propulsion system. This also entered service in 1942. So 1942 was basically the year where the Germans began making wood gas versions of their uh, standard tanks and some of their half track slash transportation vehicles or armored transportation vehicles. Um, this vehicle still had the same one 7.92 millimeter MG34 or MG42 later on and had an armor thickness of 6 to 14.5 millimeters and had a speed of 52.5 um, kilometers per hour or 32.5 miles per hour um, this vehicle is pretty rare also i haven't seen that many photographs of the wood gas powered sd kf said 251 um, gas powered um, half track uh, or training half track you know and then now let's get to some of the more interesting i guess fake tanks or fake training tanks built by the German army. Now, during the war, the Germans built a large number. I mean, there are, all of these vehicles have, are not accounted for. There are lots of vehicles that weren't photographed, but they built a large number of um, unnamed 
improvised training tanks. These were training tanks made from just random, from just random vehicles, tractors, lorries, abandoned cars, uh, wagons. Uh, they made them from all sorts of vehicles, and they made them to look like you know actual tanks from a distance. Some of these vehicles weren't even really tanks; they were just like wooden monuments or wooden statues of tanks or wooden constructions that were designed to look like tanks from a distance you know um, they built a lot of these vehicles these vehicles were also under the standard title the panzer atrapi or panzer atrapin um, type vehicles and most of these weren't actually vehicles i'll say half of these weren't vehicles these were just static training vehicles or static training tanks you know these were designed to be destroyed in most cases uh, these were mostly used to test anti-tank weapons like the Panzerfaust or or magnetic tank mines or magnetic anti-tank mines for example so you had a lot of these some of these vehicles just look like random contraptions um, that resemble tanks others look like t-34s some of them look like um, American M4 Shermans uh, those are rare I can't really find any photographs of those and you even have some of these training vehicles they were designed to look like modifications of German half tracks in fact the Germans even built wooden mock-ups of their own tanks to be used as decoys you know and these decoys could also be used um, to train uh, German anti-tank crews or to train German tank crews on how to spot an enemy tank so that's pretty much it um, this is all the information I could find on German training tanks um, these photographs it took me about a week or so to find all these photographs and the information that goes with them uh, these are the rarest uh, training tanks if I had to pick my favorite if I had to pick two of the best on this list I would say my favorite were the Nebel Fazulk tank from 1933 and the wood gas powered Tiger tank from 1942. Those are the those are my favorite picks of these tanks. So, what are your opinions on these German training tanks? What do you think? Which ones were the best? Uh, what are your thoughts overall on German? Um, manufacturing of training tanks or German target training tanks like the ones um, towards the end of this list and uh, what are your opinions please put them in the comments section below and until next time this was J-Man Time signing off Diese Einstellung brachte jeden früheren Tag vor, die für einen Ansatz der Panzerwaffe eintrat. Diese so schnell wie möglich abgeworfen, indem sie vorschlug, die Panzerverbände von der Landwirtschaft und zu lösen, um sie zur Einstellung zu Damit verbot sie von selbst die Eingliederung der motorisierten Panzerverbände in die Infanteriedivision. Am 20. Mai 1935 
1997 wurde 